In this lesson, we're going to learn how to balance the following equation using the oxidation number method relative to this redox reaction. So to be able to balance this using the oxidation number method, we have to assign oxidation numbers. So we're going to take each element um, within the compounds on the reactant side and we're going to assign oxidation numbers. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the product side because we've got to be able to identify what is gaining and losing electrons. So to get us started, we see potassium permanganate here. Potassium is in group 1A, so it's going to exhibit a plus 1 charge. And oxidation numbers are just apparent charges that elements exhibit within a compound. So potassium here is exhibiting a plus 1. Each oxygen is going to exhibit a negative 2. Now oxygen can exhibit a negative 1 in peroxides, but here it's going to exhibit the negative 2. So if we do a little bit of simple math here, we notice we have 4 oxygens. We're actually trying to balance out a negative 8. So potassium will contribute one towards balancing out that negative eight, but the manganese here in the middle would actually have to be a plus seven. So the oxidation numbers for each element within this compound are going to be what you see in front of you now once I erase the math. So potassium is plus one, the manganese is a plus seven, and each oxygen is a negative two. We go over here to the hydrochloric acid, this is pretty simple because hydrogen is in group 1A, so it usually exhibits a plus one charge. Chlorine's a halogen. Most halogens will exhibit a negative one charge in a lot of their compounds. So it's pretty easy to see how that will balance out. Go here, potassium chloride, very similar. Um, this will balance out with a plus one and a negative one. Over here for the manganese chloride, uh, once again, the halogen is a negative one. And to figure out the manganese here, we're going to do a little bit of math. We have two of the chlorines, and all of it's got to add up to be zero. So manganese here would have to be a plus 2. So we're able to say here that the oxidation number is going to be plus 2 and a negative 1. So we'll get rid of the math, that simple math we did to actually prove that. Free elements, by the way, they're always 0. So chlorine here, when it's not bonded to anything else in its elemental form, will be 0. And then over here, the water. Water is always plus 1 and negative 2. So now that we have all the oxidation numbers assigned, what we now need to do is identify what's going up in oxidation number. We're going to call that process oxidation. And then what's going down in oxidation number, we're going to call that reduction. So here, let's go ahead and identify what's going down in oxidation number. And we see the manganese here is going from a plus 7 to a plus 2. So we're going to highlight that down below, that manganese here is going from a plus 7 to manganese in a plus 2. So hopefully you can see here that we are reducing that oxidation number down by 5. Or we say here that the manganese has been reduced. It's actually gaining 5 electrons. Anything that undergoes reduction, we have a special name for that substance. And this entire substance is actually called an oxidizing agent. Now what does an oxidizing agent do? An oxidizing agent causes something else to be oxidized. It causes something else to lose what itself is trying to gain. So potassium permanganate is forcing something else in this reaction to lose electrons so that it can gain the five that it needs to go from a plus seven down to a plus two. So if we have one substance being reduced simultaneously, we have to have something else that is being oxidized. So in this case, we need to look for an oxidation number that's going up if we're looking for oxidation. And here we can see that we have a chlorine at a negative 1, and it's not changing in the first product, not changing in the second product. Right here, chlorine is exhibiting an oxidation number 0. So we can highlight that. We can show the chlorine on the reactant side going from negative 1 to the chlorine 0 on the product side. So we can see here that the oxidation number is going down by one. Excuse me, it is going up by one. Let's get this straight. The oxidation number is going up by one. And if this is going up by one, we're going to call this process oxidation. Can't have one without the other. If we had reduction above, you've got to have oxidation down below. Sure enough, this oxidation number is going up by one. So we have one substance that's trying to gain five electrons and another substance that's only losing one electron. Now the substance that's actually being oxidized, in this case the chlorine, this entire substance here, the HCl, we have a special name for that. That is called the reducing 
agent. What is a reducing agent? Causes something else to be reduced. It is causing something else to gain the electrons that itself is losing. So something else is going to gain this one electron, and therefore we're going to call this HCl, the entire substance, not just the chlorine part of it, but the entire substance here was the reducing agent. Now if we'd like to balance this equation, I really need to get this electron transfer balanced. So in order to do so, I'm going to multiply this one by 5 and this one by 1, because obviously 1 times 5 would give me 5 electrons being lost, as well as 5 electrons being gained. So if we're trying to gain five electrons, we need to lose five electrons. Now these numbers that I'm using out here to the left, I'm going to use those as coefficients. So manganese with a plus seven, we're going to put a coefficient of one in front of that. And then manganese with a plus two, we're going to put a coefficient of one in front of this one. So we've got understood ones in front of the manganese that participated. And then chlorine with a negative 1 on the left hand side of the arrow, because notice there are some chlorines on the product side that have a negative 1 as well. But this chlorine right here says we're going to use a coefficient of 5. So we're going to put a 5 right there. And then Cl2, which we notice over here, we're also going to put a coefficient of 5 there. And hopefully this is going to help us balance this redox reaction. Hopefully this is going to help us balance it. So let's kind of summarize what we've done so far. So basically, we have ones in front of the manganese and a five and a five here. So if we rewrite basically what we just did with the redox, we're going to be able to see that we have a coefficient of one here. We put a coefficient of five here. We also had a five here and a one here. So those are the coefficients where we're talking about the gain and the loss. That is, all I did is I transferred these coefficients from this screen over here. Now, by inspection, you can tell that this isn't balanced. If you simply multiply 5 times 2, that is 10 chlorines, plus another 2, so we've got 10 here, plus another 2 here, plus another 1 here, or obviously we've got a total of 13 chlorines. So, this obviously can't stay a 5. We'd say, you know what? We're going to try 13. Well, placing a 13 there not only changes the chlorines, it also is going to change the hydrogens. And there's nothing whole number wise we can multiply by 2 to give us 13 hydrogens. So we're not necessarily at an impasse, but one thing that we do know is that this number right here is going to have to be even if we're going to get those hydrogens to balance by using a whole number coefficient in front of that water. So what is the culprit that make, that's making the chlorines odd on the left-hand side? Well, it happens to be this chlorine right here. It's that chlorine that is making things odd. So let's try and actually fix this issue. Let's actually take where we're at now. So we had an understood one here. We had a five here that we were trying to change to 13. We had a one here and a five here. And we notice that it's this chlorine that's making that come out to be odd. So you know what? I can take care of that pretty easy. I can put a 2 in front of that. Well, not only does that change the chlorines, that changes the potassium. So i got to go over here and put a 2. Well, not only does that change these potassiums, it also changes the manganese to 2. So I can go change this to 2. You step back for a second and you say, we're doing a lot of changing here. Uh, what's the point? Well, the point is, we're trying to get the chlorines even, and by changing this 1, 2 right here in front of the KCl, it dictated that we had to change this 2, and it dictated that we had to put in this 2. The things are going to work out. Let's count our chlorines now. 5 times 2 is 10. We have 4 more here, and 2 more here. So we have a total of 16. Now we've got that even number that we're talking about. Now we can put a 16 in front of that HCl. Well, you put a 16 there, we obviously can go over here and we can put an 8 in front of our water. And if you take a look, everything is balanced. So we're able to balance this using the redox method. So our final balance equation would be 2KMNO4 plus 16 HCl goes to 2KCl plus 2 MnCl2 plus 5 Cl2 
plus 8 waters. And you say, well, that seemed like a lot of work. We did a lot of balancing by trial and error, and yes, we did. However, keep in mind, by doing this redox method, by knowing that we needed to put a 5 in front of this CL2, gave us a really good starting point. Notice that 5 right there in this overall balance equation, it never changed. And sometimes when you're balancing really complex reactions, redox reactions, it really is nice to have one number that you know is not going to change. Now, a lot of times using the oxidation number method, you're not going to change this many of the coefficients. But in this case, we did have to do quite a bit by trial and error, but we were able to see that having that 5 in front of that chlorine um, allowed us to get started. So we balanced this reaction using what is called the oxidation number method. We simply balanced the gain with the loss of the electrons, so that for every five electrons that were being lost, five electrons were being gained.